and now you uh, drafted a new quarterback in Trey Lance. So I know it's been a minute, but you've had some time to reflect. What was your reaction when your team moved up and took him? Uh, well, I think just like the whole fact that we traded up to the third pick, and I think that was a couple weeks beforehand, like that was surprising in itself, but exciting. You know, I'm, I'm all for like taking risks and taking shots and, you know, because uh, when you go up to the third pick, I mean, you're obviously trying to draft somebody that's going to change your franchise. Um, and then the fun fact about when we drafted uh, Trey Lance, I was actually uh, on a flight and we took off and I had no idea who we drafted until we got Wi-Fi like at 10,000 feet. So that was kind of a, an exhilarating like 15 minutes for me. But I mean, I was excited for it. Um, you know, Trey's a good quarterback. I'm excited to see, you know, the progression that he makes. Uh, he's a hell of an athlete just being in OTAs with them. He's a guy that wants to learn every single day. He's competitive every single day. Doesn't let a mistake stop him. Nothing, nothing snowballs. So I mean, he's got he's got all the right uh, the right attributes. And you know, just excited to see what uh, how he progresses in training camp. And uh, Robert, you, I read a, a, a PFF grade for your for like what highest I think it was passer rating or QBR for tight ends, right? So you get more targets this year, and suddenly your quarterback is the highest passing rating. I'm sure that had something to do with the quarterback who was throwing you the ball and also something to do with you. What is it going to be like on that team if, if Rodgers is not there? Um, I haven't really thought about it as a negative. I mean, I'm just working on myself and bettering uh, myself in every aspect of my game uh, and taking guys along the way on the team who – uh, want to get better as well and I think that that's everyone across the board and uh, that's out of our hands and I think that if we think in a positive way and uh, just want the best and hope for the best of the team and worry about the Green Bay Packers I think all the pieces are going to fall into place and we'll be fine. Hey guys listen um, George you and I spoke when you came on my show Stephen A's World and I, and I wanted to talk to you about this because I'm really interested in what y'all are doing at tight end university and I wanted to talk I wanted you to tell us uh, exactly why y'all decided to come up with this idea and exactly what do you believe you guys are going to bring to the table for each other in terms of teaching one another about that position or elevating your level of knowledge about that position compared to what an actual position coach or an offensive coordinator, or a head coach can bring? What are players themselves going to bring to the table that you can't get from learning from your coaches at the tight end spot? Well, I mean, I think the best thing about tight end you is you're bringing together, and I think I said this on your show, I think that tight end is one of the most diverse positions in football because there's only one true starter on Sundays. There's one guy. So there's 32 starters in the NFL on every given Sunday. And – um, and all these tight ends are so vastly different. I mean, you got guys like uh, Mercedes Lewis, who's been in the league 17 years. You got Kyle Pitts, who's a rookie. You got a guy like Luke Stocker, who's in, going into year 10, and he has 70 catches in his career, but he's played football for 10 years. And you got Evan Ingram. You got O.J. Howard. You got all these guys that just are so different, but they all play the same position. So my goal is to bring all these guys together. And because tight end's a position where you have to run block, pass pro, run routes, catch the ball, uh, run routes on DBs. You have to get to the second level on linebackers, run routes against safeties. Like you kind of have to do everything. So why not bring all of the world's best to one location and then learn from each other? Like, so like a guy like Kyle Pitts or a second year guy like uh, Cole Komet, they can come in and they can learn, Hey, this is how Travis Kelsey runs a corner post in the red zone, but this is how I get to the second level on my run blocking. And it just allows these guys to learn about every single aspect of their game, because if you can play the tight end, uh, if you can play the tight end position and do everything at a very high level, then there's not really anything a defense can do against you. Because what are you going to do? Line up a safety in you in the box, and all of a sudden you call a run play and you drive them ten yards back in the end zone and pancake them. Like, all right, then you got to put a linebacker on you. Then next thing you know, you're running a, a corner route and your quarterback's dropping you a dime, and then you're running for a touchdown. There's just so many things that a tight end can do, and so when you can bring all the best in the game to learn from each other. You're going you're gonna to get guys that are elevating their game and are playing the position at a higher level week in and week out. Has, has Tim Tebow applied to tight end you? I, I, hear that, I hear that he has recommendation from Urban Meyer. Does that mean anything? Has he applied yet, guys? Oh, uh, you know, the thing about tight end you is, uh, so unfortunately this year we were limited on space. I can't invite everybody, which is tough for me because I would love for the, I want the tight end position to be uh, every NFL tight end. I want everyone to come because I want everyone to learn, everyone to get better. But <laughs> We didn't really plan that every single tight end would want to come. Uh, we thought we were going to get like 20, 25 guys max. And the next thing we knew, we were at 45 to 50. Uh, ran out of hotel rooms, um, kind of ran out of space just in general. So hopefully in the next coming years, I can make it available to every single person. And then any tight end that wants to come can show up, learn, get better, 
and just take another step forward. Thank in you, Tim, career. for your app. Thank you, Tim, for your application. Unfortunately, yeah. we have a limited amount of space at tight end. I got you. Well, you know what, Max? It's just it, one out. thing that's hard for me is like, how do I not invite like? Because if I can't invite every tight end. How do I not invite like a second or third string guy in a team that's been playing tight end since he was 18 year olds in high school and like nothing against Tim Tebow. I hope that he has incredible success this year. I hope he has 10 touchdowns. I hope he has a great year, but it's hard for me to invite someone to this that just started playing the position when I can't invite a guy that's been playing it for eight to 10 years. That's just hard for me. And, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully I can make Good it open point. to every single, every single player. Good point. I got to, I got to switch gears in this regard, in this regard. I remember if I remember correct, I don't remember, uh, you can refresh my memory if you want to. A couple of years ago or so, Jimmy Graham made news because obviously he was a tight end, but I, if I remember correctly, he felt like he should have been uh, been paid as a hybrid or a wide receiver or whatever because in the NFL, unlike other sports, they'll look at you at a particular position and basically say, okay, there's a time limit on this. You're running back by the time you hit 29 or 30 years of age. You'll be on the downside of your career. Who knows what they think about tight ends compared to wide receivers. I want to know what, if any, if any reason at all, did that play in you guys coming together and creating tight end university because of the absence of appreciation that seems to be co accorded to that position by NFL teams. Can both of y'all speak to that for a second? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Greg Olson said it really well. Um, like in the like prime of his career, he was making like seven million dollars, and he was blocking defensive ends that made fifteen to twenty million dollars, and he was running routes against corners and safeties that made fifteen to twenty million dollars, and they paid him seven million. So you're asking a guy that is supposed to do everything on a football field um, to go against all these guys that are making a ton of money, and we're going to pay you half. And, yeah, like, there's a lot of teams that say, well, we can sacrifice at the tight end position if we have elite wide receivers, if we have elite running backs, an elite quarterback, an elite left tackle. But if you look at the past, like, I don't know, 10 years, every team that's been in, like, Super Bowl contention has had an elite tight end on the field. I mean, like, look what the Patriots did with Gronk. Look what the Chiefs are doing with Kelsey. You know, we're trying to get back, but we were in the Super Bowl two years ago. Like, the Packers have been in the NFC Championship game back-to-back -back years. Like, the teams that are playing at elite levels – have elite yeah. tight ends that are making plays for them on a consistent basis. So I feel like it's time for all those tight ends to finally get rewarded for that. 